Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm Marion McLaughlin, and these are some of my wonderful friends that I'll introduce in a little bit. But first off, we're going to start with a song called Zoysia Grass. Juxtaposition of Jupiter and Venus in the West. A sight to see, I believe, takes away my breath.
That's a, a song about just celebrating existence, and um, I named it Zoe Seal Grass because a good, I wrote it um, f uh, initially for a good friend who used to live on Zoe Seal Court. And um, I'm about to do another song in tribute to an old friend, and it's called An Eagle. And uh, just a quick note about Zoysia Grass, there's a lyric in it that goes, uh, the juxtaposition of Jupiter and Venus in the West, a sight to see, I believe it takes away my breath. And uh, a few years ago, um, Betty Scott, who does Strathmore Artists in Residence uh, program, uh, um, she helped me get the show tonight, and she helps a lot of the um, Strathmore artists and residents get the show. She sent me a text, like, look out in the sky tonight for the juxtaposition of Jupiter and Venus in the West. And so every summer I look out for that uh, constellation. Thank you, Betty. <laughs> Betty said she would be here tonight, but it's the opening season for uh, Strathmore Air. So this song is called Eagle, and it goes out to a dear old friend, Aaron Brown. Remember that time when you tried to explain the word sublime to me? But we had got all caught up in the terminology of chemistry, fumbling around as you tried to speak, trying to figure out how a solid turns into a gas while totally bypassing a liquid state, just like today when I went to the lake. Something happened that day. You snapped and ran outside crying. I chased after you, barefoot in the zoysia grass, past unfazed rabbits, and I found you at last, collapsed on your knees, silently staring at the sunset. It was on that day, during that soft metallic June, that I finally felt like I understood the meaning of that word, sublime. One Sunday morning I heard shouting Coming from a crowd of eager people They were on some kind of outing Someone said that they saw an eagle It's been a decade since you left us Death was unpleasant then, my friend It's been a second, yes, I reckon Since I asked this Even on days when I am down 
and doubting, hoping that somewhere along the clouds I'll make out the shape. Playing a lot of songs tonight from this album I'm hopefully putting out next month called Lake Akatink. I got to go to the lake for a quick moment today. It was very pleasant. But, um, one memory I have of my friend Aaron was him helping his friend um, build a little like um, information shelter on the trail. And um, for their eagle, for his uh, friend's Eagle Scout project. And uh, there's a family of eagles now that live right very close to it. So um, just have like that um, imagery of that memory with the eagles when I see them. This song is called Mums and Marigolds. to introduce my friends. We have Jana Nicole on the flute. We have Chao Tian on the Chinese dulcimer. Lucas Ashby on the drum kit. And Ethan Foote on bass, later guitar. And I'm eternally grateful for Ethan for over the years uh, collaborating and writing arrangements for a various number of my songs. So thank you. And um, Yana and Chow, they have this amazing project, uh, musical project called Project Locria. Did I say it right? Project right. Locria. Um, and when I heard them play this summer, I was like, I really want to do a show with them. And uh, I'm glad I could have uh, Yana and Chow with me tonight. And yeah. And it's great to have Lucas join as well after doing some recording. So thank you. Woo. We're going to do uh, this song now called Cypress.
Cypress, I spied you siphoning water from the creek. First things first, I can decipher your thirst. I find it quite disconcerting how you and the others are hurting. This land is terse, but I will plan for your nest. The summer, it is stifling, and the only kind of lightning that is striking is from the heat. Well, I will gladly greet any sign of rain. survival but I know you'll make it through for you are not weak you are living proof with all your roots you cannot lose you've been standing here for over a century I don't doubt that you'll make it out of this drought I don't doubt that you'll beat this bout of heat Everything will pass, whether or not we allow it to. Everything will pass. Eventually. I wrote that song um, when I was in the hill country of Texas a few winters ago around the Laxum Creek. Um, my boyfriend's family had some property there and there were these beautiful cypress trees. And it just made me think about um, drought, natural cycles, and persistence. All right. Make sure I'm good to go. And this next one's called Studying Metamorphosis, and it's a little bit about resistance. Here we go. Studying metamorphosis in a foreign language, struggling for the words to stick. They are pouring in. Will I manage to attain? Something ancient, latent is aching to escape. And I cannot contain it, no. I cannot contain it, no. Study. 
This next song is um, it's called Hunt and Gather. And the inspiration was I was on my way to a hike in the woods. We stopped maybe at a gas station. And I was just kind of thinking, this is so crazy. There's like 30 kinds of Gatorade and all these Cheetos and chips and what have you. And like back in the day, like people would just hunt and gather their food. But now there's a factory for everything. 
and um, kind of takes a stab at Amazon in a song, which um, I'm a little dubious about how more people are familiar with a corporation like Amazon versus Amazon, which is the heart, the, I mean, the lungs of the world. So here we go. We used to hunt and gather now there's a factory for just about practically anything you can imagine. We used to hunt and gather. Now there's a factory for just about practically anything you can imagine. Are you overdoing it with your labor when they're paying you mere wages? But a wager that you crave to have something that you can save up and a line of work that sustains. You feel like your best efforts are hidden because the internet is full of algorithms and you're fed up keeping your head up to swim in it only to wash away. We used to hunt and gather Now there's a factory For just about practically Anything you can imagine We used to hunt and gather Now there's a factory For just about practically Anything you can imagine Did you factor that into the equation That they inundate us with information Then they track and capture and trade All of our data day by day, day by day They know exactly what we all desire So Amazon expands its empire While the other Amazon becomes a pyre day Now is the time to gather, take action, don't be distracted. Now is the time to gather, take action, don't be distracted. Now is the time to gather, take action, don't be distracted. Now is the time to gather, take action. Don't be distracted. A round of applause again for Yana Nicole on flute. Chao Tian on Chinese dulcimer. Lucas Ashby on drum. Ethan Foote on bass, and now the steel string guitar. Ethan and I went on a few tours, and on one or two of the tours, he brought a 12 string, and <laughs> our friend Katie, who was on the tour with us, she said, no more 12 string, but it's all good. So this is a song called Citronella Ritual, and it's about celebrating existence, and I wrote it for VNA. <laughs> I also wrote it for like cicadas and butterflies. Here we go. A citronella ritual was far fetched from habitual along the bridge and over the river. Dab a little on our wrists and grab each other for a kiss to celebrate our mutual existence. But 
Since the winter's fully passed, we can return to the warm forest floor at last. It's waiting there for us. It's waiting there. It's waiting there for us. It's waiting there. The Papillon Pavilion inside our tent was brilliant. It made me grin to be the receiver. It was softening, and then we'd spin off into the ether. The skipper and the swallow tail, the copper, they would drift and sail. They're waiting there. always fond of finding the first fern frond. I knew it grew beyond the froggy waters of the great swan pond. And I knew that land through and through Even in the fog Most beautiful thought That will never get lost Is that It's waiting there for us I'm going to do something mega exciting and play on the piano now. <laughs> yeah. Um, a few years ago, Ethan and I were doing some shows with a 10-piece ensemble, and there were a couple times there was a piano on stage. We were joking, like, you've got to start writing songs on piano. It was, like, taking up more stage than the band. <laughs> so here we go. This is another song um, about admiring um, nature and feeling a call for um, the outdoors and how sometimes like, uh, for instance, like I, I, when I was writing this, my friend is actually an ornithologist, a person who studies birds, which I've always wanted to be, but I decided to be a songwriter and musician. And um, the day after I finished writing this song, she posted online, I wish I was uh, making art and not studying birds. And I commented, I wish the opposite. Isn't that crazy? She said, all you need is binoculars and a bird field book. Um, so yeah, this is called The, the Cosmos right now. And um, I wrote it for synthesizer, but I'm playing on piano tonight because this is a beautiful Steinway. He wanted to be a botanist But he thought not in this life There is not enough time But he found himself getting lost in the microcosms Like golden pollen and columns of moss Well, the cosmos called Oh, the cosmos called Oh, the cosmos called and he could not ignore it when the cosmos beckoned for his attention. He set the intention to spend time outdoors. On a walks, he'd notice overflowing flocks or a budding. 
Herodes that gave him the nod that he was interlocking with the cosmos that he was interlocking with the cosmos she wanted to be an astronaut but she was taught to remain grounded in class she found herself surrounded by four walls and a ceiling so tall and made out of glass but the cosmos called oh the cosmos called oh the cosmos called and she could not ignore it when the cosmos beckoned for her attention she set the intention to spend time outdoors clear nights permitted a trip outside of the city limits and she would stare for hours at the cosmos she would stare for hours at the cosmos She wanted to be an ornithologist, but someone convinced her to dismiss her dreams. Sadly, she listened, but later on, she was redeemed. Because the cosmos called, oh, the cosmos called, oh, the cosmos called, and she could not ignore when the cosmos beckoned for her attention she set the intention to spend time outdoors a great blue heron graced her sight and it grew apparent how she just might be quite connected to the cosmos be quite connected to the cosmos feedback that I am a forest person singer, which is very true. Um, like people are like, oh, you're like a, what is it, like a wood nymph or something like that. I get that a lot. Um, <laughs> I write about nature a lot, but this song, um, as well as other songs on my upcoming album, like Akatink, is um, also about like uh, ecological anxiety and environmental issues that we're currently facing from um, land fragmentation um, which creates habitat loss um, for animals and um, plastic pollution in the oceans, uh, planetary boundaries, which um, is like ocean acidification, stratospheric ozone depletion, radioactivi radioactivity. Um, uh, there's also a song on the album about um, what happened at Standing Rock and what's currently, like um, that kind of stuff is happening in Virginia with um, Mountain Valley Pipeline. So um, I hope that when it comes out, it can resonate with people to um, be inspired to stand up for our planet, which I'm very concerned about. And so I, I asked my friend if she could, uh, when I was trying to write this song about climate change I'm about to play called Out of Season, I was like, uh, if you could summarize what's going on right now with climate change in one word or one sentence, what would it be? And she said, we're past the point of mitigating the effects. And that really frightens me. So I wrote this song to sort of process these emotions. It's called Out of Season. The robins are flying over the lions who quietly lie in eternal repose and a little lamb folded over stone just like a sphinx it's quick to throw a riddle though it never even blinks and a daffodil and a crocus are opening before us enchanted by the opus of a murmuration's chorus 
But it's quite absurd These record-breaking temperatures Were acquiescent but perturbed It's just the tip of the iceberg Um, da di da da di da Um, da di da da di da Um, da di da da di da di da di di da da di da Several thresholds of planetary boundaries It was all bound to happen Eventually A loss of biosphere Integrity Stratospheric ozone depletion Ocean acidification And an introduction of novel entities Like organic pollutants and radioactivity to invite Ethan, Chao, and Yana back to the stage. <laughs> Lucas, you can come too if you want, even if you're not playing on the song. Um, I do have copies of my older album, Spirit House, with me tonight, back there. And they're for sale for $10. But um, none of the songs from Spirit House are being played tonight. It's all new stuff. I have a, a DC release show for my new album on November 4th 
at Rhizome. This next song is a celebration of um, being outdoors again called the Grace and Highlands about a beautiful park in the very southern region of Virginia. There's some wild ponies and uh, great trails to hike and it's adjacent to the Appalachian Trail. Sorry, but my tuner messed up things up. Let me double check that. Sorry, one moment. Okay, cool. It was reading another setting, so I didn't want <laughs> to be messed up. Okay. be patient until I reach the grace and highlands adjacent to the Appalachian Trail. And as I'm climbing up that peak I will be smiling just to see the landscape at a different kind of scale. And searching for some clarity is a rarity these days, but when I'm in nature, Things become so spacious, so I will sing with highest praise the grace on highlands. I will sing with highest praise the grace on highlands. be patient until I reach the grace and highlands adjacent to the Appalachian Trail and as I'm climbing up that peak I will be silent, I will not speak, for there's plenty for my senses to unveil. receive its greatness and grace I will take care of this place I will leave no trace but the grace on highlands I'm just so grateful to be at the grace on highlands
And we have time for one last song. I truly feel very honored to be here. Thank you to the, everyone running the Kennedy Center's Millennium Stage. Hold on a moment, just reconfiguring microphones. It's um, just such a treat to be able to play with you all. Thank you. So. Just gonna check the tuning real quick on my heart. This last song is called uh, Of the Lake and the Land. And I, I wrote it um, based on just like fond memories, walking around the lake with my mom and my dad and my sister, you know. Um, and I remember, um, you know, m my mom being like, oh, that, you know, this is what a snapping dragon, this a snapping turtle is, and this is a snapping dragon. And I learned all about a lot of birds and flowers from family showing me at the lake. And um, I'll be doing a little show at Lake Akatink, a little informal show there um, on October 7th. And if you want to see me solo, I'll be back in D.C. on the 21st of September. Here we go. All right, here we go. I'm gonna move this a little so my foot doesn't kick it. Gifts, the gathering as cross cackle and sing 
on the brinks of Lake Agnati, bestow your gifts. Once again, thank you, Betty Scott. <laughs> oh, Betty. Um, and thank you, Yana Nicole. Ciao, Tian. Ciao's got a show coming here in November, November 19th. November 19th with Tom Teasley. Lucas Ashby. And Ethan Foote. Thank you. Much love.